before we make the microcontroller, there's something that I do want to explain really quickly. Our velocity is equal to our change in distance over our change in time. That's pretty much it. That's just something that I want to tell you so you can understand some of the things we're going to do, okay? So to start with the microcontroller, I'm just going to name it Bob. Okay, this is going to be Bob the microcontroller. I'll just save it now so I don't have to later. Well, I do have to later, but you know what I mean. So we're going to go to logic. I'm going to give you a couple of different nodes. So the first is going to be a composite from the astronomy sensor. And then this next one is going to be a number output for your absolute velocity. So this is your velocity from all different directions. It's just your vector, right? And then this one is only going to be horizontal velocity. So it's not going to take into account the Y velocity. So from the astronomy sensor, we know that we have three values. We have X, Y, and Z. So let's grab uh, three read numbers. I'm just going to copy and paste this a couple times. So one is X, two is going to be Y, and Z is going to be three. So we know that we want to measure the change in this. Stormworks does give us something called delta. Delta, it just, it just means change. So I'm going to copy this three times, just control copy and then V. So now what we're doing is we're just going to connect these. Okay, so we're measuring the change in the X, the change in the Y, and the change in the Z in zero, uh, what is it? in 1 60th of a second. So we have some sort of velocity, but it's not the one we want. We want meters a second. We don't want whatever unit the astronomy sensor is over 1 60th of a second. So we need to fix that. Um, we're going to start with a function now. So first we want to fix the time. So all we have to do to do this is just say x times 60 because we have 1 60th, sorry, 1 60th of a second and we want to make it a full second so we just multiply it by 60. And now we want to fix the units. So I did a couple of really precise measurements. We know that, or well, <laughs> we don't know. Now we know that 0 0.1 on the astronomy sensor for the x or z is equal to this number, about 400 meters. It's a little more. But I spent a long time trying to get these numbers. So all we have to do after we fix the time, we just have to fix the unit. So we convert it to the astronomy unit to meters. And that's going to be our velocity in meters a second for the x and the z direction. But not exactly. We have to do one more thing. Next, we just have to multiply this entire thing by 100 because this unit is just off by a factor of 100, right? So that's all we have to do. For the x and z, the y is a little different. but yeah, we just fix the time by x times 60, fix the unit by multiplying it by however many meters the astronomy sensor is counting, and then multiply it by 100. And we can copy this entire function block and do it for the z direction as well. Remember that 2 is y. And then this is... we'll get to these in a second. Next, we just need to do a, something slightly different. For the y, it's pretty much the same thing. Oops, wait, let me copy all this. It's pretty much the same thing, except instead of 400, it's 4,908 and this big number. If you just want to pause and paste that into whatever you need to. Or, yeah. So that's pretty much it. We have our velocity in the x, y, and z. So you could just put these straight into different outputs if you wanted to, but... Like I said, I'm going to give you the absolute velocity, so I'm going to rename this. This is going to be uh, absolute, I'm pretty sure I'm spelling that wrong. Absolute and, or is, you know, that's close enough. So, for absolute velocity, this is our velocity in every single direction combined. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to go to paint 3D. You can just skip this part if you want. Um, wait, wait. Okay, so say we have our Y and our X. Or actually, no, sorry, this is this is going to be the Z and the X. So this is Z, this is X. We're measuring the pr pretty much, this is going to be weird to explain, but it's essentially the slope, right? Because we have our velocity in the X direction going that way, and we have the velocity in the Y direction going that way. So what that gives us is a right triangle. And we can just find the hypotenuse using Pythagorean's theorem. So we know that we just have to take, uh, or sorry, the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of 
a squared plus b squared. And in this case, since these are representing velocity, it's just the square root of our x velocity um, squared plus our z velocity squared. And I, that that's all we have to do for that. So that means that all we have to do is just grab another function. This time it needs to be one with three. We're going to grab the x and the z velocity, and we're just gonna square them, add them together. So the square root of the x squared plus the, uh, what is this, y, z, so y squared. And then I'm just gonna put these in parentheses again just to make sure that it doesn't make any calculation mistakes. And there we go. Now, what about absolute velocity? Well, we can just grab another function block and we do the same thing except we put it all under one square root. The reason is because, I'm just gonna scoot over here. If we have this direction we, and, and this direction, this is representing another dimension, then we know we can have our velocity right here as this component, but then what if we're also moving that way? Well, now we kind of have another triangle right here, right? And this length is still equal to the hypotenuse, so it's just it's just another one of those things, you know? We take the value you already have and just square root. I don't know how to explain it. I'm not that good with 3D kinematics. But essentially, we take all the values um, for this is x, y, and z, and we just square root it. Uh, three parentheses. And so it's going to be x squared plus, I probably should have put the pluses first, y squared plus z squared. Oops, where did, what, where did it go? Okay, plus z squared. And that's going to give us the absolute velocity. So I'm going to connect this to absolute, this to horizontal, save it as Bob, and then we're going to test it. So give me a second to make a vehicle. All right, I didn't make this vehicle. Well, I did make the vehicle, just not like three seconds ago. It's an old bus that I made. But I'm gonna grab the digital display just so we can see the numbers easily. And I'm gonna put down two of them. So the linear speed sensor, just so we can compare the results, is going to connect straight into this bottom one. Now we need the astronomy sensor because you know this is what this is all about, the astronomy. And then we're gonna grab Bob. Bob is gonna go right here. So because this is a bus, we could use either absolute or only horizontal because it's only moving horizontally and because there is no change in its y velocity you know that absolute part wouldn't be taken into account at all so let's see let's just do horizontal just for simplicity and then we're going to connect the composite to the astronomy sensor and then we just spawn it in so let me grab the bus i forgot how to drive this thing to be honest let's see if i remember uh, brakes off, throttle, clutch, starter. There we go. Alright, now you can see the numbers are identical. They're exactly the same. And the reason is because we're measuring the change in our distance over the change in time. All we had to do was fix the unit for time and fix the unit for distance. Now, I'm going to put it onto a plane real quick, and we'll see if the absolute is going to remain the same as well. Alright, this is a bomber that I made based off of the B29, I believe. So, we're going to start off with the astronomy one. So, I'm going to put down the astronomy sensor. I'm going to grab the display. I'm going to have two of them. Uh, it's going to be placed in- I don't want to block the thing because I want to drop the bombs since I'm flying this bomber anyways. Man, I've always been bad at this one. Okay, so we have those. Then we just need to grab the linear speed sensor. Remember, this is all in meters a second. If you want to convert it, you'll have to do that with the conversion thing in the, uh, function block. So, we just grab the linear speed sensor. That's going to go in the top this time. And absolute is going to go right there. And then the data from the astronomy sensor will go into Bob. And then we just have to fly the airplane. I hope I didn't forget anything. Oh boy. You know, I, I'm just going to show off my bomber while I'm here too. You know, this thing took me forever, to be honest. I might as well. Okay, if I can even get in. You know what? I'm cheating. Close the door. Alright. Let's see if I remember how to fly this. 
Um, battery, fuel pumps. Uh huh, yeah. Sounds good. Ooh. Uh, please take off. Hey, it flies. I'm surprised. I'm going to disable ground steering. Alright, we're in the air. We're going upwards. We're going horizontally. And the speed is still remaining the same. Even though we added that vertical component, the speed is still staying the same. If I were to nosedive into the ground, which is a terrible idea in a bomber, by the way, you can see it remains the same. If I turn to the right, you can see it remains the same. And why is doing it with this method good? Well, it's because in space, you're not allowed to use the linear speed sensor, so instead you can use the astronomical data, which is going to work anywhere. So, that is how you do that. Wow, that is loud, I'm sorry. That's how you do that with the astronomy sensor. And I'm just gonna drop the bombs. Two, four, six, eight. I forgot how, much, how many of this thing holds. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, I think, ooh, two of them are stuck. That's just so satisfying. One more. Alright, so, yeah, think if you have any questions, please ask. I'm really bad at explaining things. But I hope you did enjoy it. And also, look, the speed is still staying the same. So, to, to sum it all up, all you need is your distance and your time.